just now looking at a discussion you had with the foreign secretary on the 5th of September, who asked you for your views on the first draft. Again, this must have been an earlier version, rather than the one that was set in motion a few days later. There's an interesting comment, where you say the draft was weakened by the Jake Doctrinaire approach to its drafting. I was just wondering what you meant by that. Good question. I mean, the answer is I have seen this reference and I'm not sure. There must be something specific that that refers to. It must be something to do with material from one of our sources and how it was presented. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sure if you searched long and hard enough in SIS records, we could turn it up, but it would be difficult, I think. I'm really not sure what that is. SIR. I'm just curious about who is drafting what at this stage, and what role sis are. Basically I didn't usually talk to Alistair about these things myself. Someone else in SIS did, who was responsible. Who would that have been? Probably one of the senior SIS officers, the people who deal with the distribution of intelligence to customers. But it would have been someone very senior. But you don't recall? I don't recall precisely who it was. Do you have any recollection of the shifts in the drafting over this period? Well, I have a recollection of the JIC meetings, the successive JIC meetings, and the subcommittee of the JIC which was pulling all this stuff together over time. It was quite a long drawn out exercise. So would you be taking a direct interest yourself in the content of the dossier, how it was put together and worded? To the extent that it included material from SIS sources and exposed our knowledge to public gaze, I would be taking a strong interest in it. What mechanisms would you use to make sure that material and there had been validated? That would be the responsibility of the requirements offices who prepared the SIS reports. But, I mean, maybe I should add now, because I'm sure you're going to question me about the new source on trial in September 2002. I think this is an important point, so we don't waste too much time on it. I can say very authoritatively there was no material in the dossier from the new source on trial in September 2002. I can also say, if you actually look at the introduction to the dossier, it refers to assessed intelligence, specifically assessed intelligence. The new source on trial was not assessed intelligence, and therefore are actually authoritatively excluded because they don't fall into that category, and I had put my foot down and said this material could not be used. I want to go through in a second just some of the things that were included. Yes. I'm just wondering first if you expressed any concerns at the time, during the course of the drafting, of the extent to which caveats were dropped, as to whether it was becoming more definite than you might have seen in a normal JIC report, for example? Well. I think the. Let's leave the introduction aside. Do you mean the introduction or the foreword? The foreword by the Prime Minister. I'm talking about the text of the report. I don't think I was involved in drafting either. I didn't see the foreword and I didn't see the introduction, I don't think. That's my recollection anyway. I mean, I think now, you know, with the benefit of hindsight. I was happy with what the dossier said in terms of what we believed at the time that it was written. I wouldn't change my judgment on that, I don't think. The Butler report commented that the language may have left readers with the impression that there was fuller and firmer intelligence behind the judgments in the dossier than was the case. Yes, I know it said that, but I think it is easy to write these things afterwards. I mean, you know, at the time when that dossier was published, it's what we believed on the evidence available, partly historical, significantly historical, partly based on the sources. Well, I had been worried about the dossier for a very long time because I didn't feel that we had a very substantive picture from intelligence. We had a substantive picture from historical material. By the time, you know, the draft was complete, I was. I think, surprised how much material had been assembled. I think you have to recall, when this document was published. And I would actually refer you also to the Institute of Strategic Studies document. Both were felt to be rather conservative, rather reserved pictures of what Iraq's capability was at that time. You know, 
it's only now. And I'm also firmly of the view that we still don't have a complete picture of Iraq's WMD, and I would like to talk about that at some point. For example, I'm absolutely of the view, and I think I can make a pretty convincing case, that Iraq had we weaponized VX, and that that material has never been found. Had even we found one artillery rocket delivery system with VX, what we are talking about might be viewed very differently, and I think that the intelligence on VX, if you actually put it together, and no one has done this, is very compelling, it's very compelling indeed, and one of the things I hope that comes out from this inquiry is that actually you will look at these issues, because actually they have been glossed over, and I'm pretty fed up with them being glossed over, because there has been an approach, a sort of selective approach to material, which is driven by people's prejudices. It's not driven by a clear objective look at the facts. Why did Iraq, on the 20th of November, order large quantities of VX antidote? There's documented intelligence which is not in doubt. I think. You know, so, I mean, I've got very strong views on this. I see this as an opportunity for me to wear them, and for people to listen and to take them seriously. I think, hopefully, we will. I think we would like to go through the ICE process. Perhaps that would be a very good time to do that. I'm afraid, nonetheless, there are some things that came up in the dossier that we have to go through but we can go through them quite quickly. Can we start with the 45 minutes report, and just where that came from and why it was included? Well, it came from another source. With benefit of hindsight, the actual investigation that I instituted later on destroyed the sourcing chain. So we had to withdraw the report. One of the problems with the 45 minutes was that it wasn't implausible, obviously, that battlefield munitions would have been prepared in this way. It was the misapprehension that arose, that it was about something other than... I think that was covered in the Hutton inquiry, actually. It was specifically about battlefield weapons. If there's anything I blame myself about, it's the fact that this was allowed to appear in the headlines of British newspapers, 40 minutes from... It's just so awful that that happened because it did refer clearly to battlefield weapons.